DaVinci Resolve 19 is finally here and I'm finally doing a video covering off some of my favorite new features that have been added. Well, it's about time. <laughs> when I say a few, I mean my top 10. Some of the biggest ones that I think make the biggest change, especially in my life and probably in yours too, as fellow editors. This is gonna be fun, guys. My name's Dan and you're watching Dan Vinci. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Now, I appreciate I am a little bit late to the game, so a lot of you may already know about these features as DaVinci Resolve has been out for a few weeks now. But to be honest with you, life has been getting in the way and I've been doing up our house. I know, I know. I digress. Let's jump into these really cool features. Let's do this. Number one. One. So the first little handy little thing that I noticed pretty much straight away is when I went straight into the edit page, I saw this bad boy in the corner here. Hello, I am a bad boy. I was like, that looks different. This is totally different. Some things that were there before are still here, but the biggest thing for me, and this is a big thing, and it seems relatively small, but it is massive, is this little boy here. You can change the viewer background. So let's say if we have this shot here, it's not quite the same aspect ratio as the frame on the timeline, and we just change it to black, we can change the background. Now why this is useful is if you have like a graphic like this and there's an alpha channel in the graphic, you could only see that originally in the fusion page. That is broken. Hang on mechanic. Yeah, so as you can see here, we had the grid background in the fusion page, which was fantastic. But when you go into the edit page, it's nice to be able to see, you know, the grid as well and see what is actually alpha. So what you can do here is just click this here and click checkerboard. And voila, you have the background grid thing. I mean, it's officially called checkerboard, but you can call it whatever. You get my point. Okay, this is an awful start. Christ. Dad, I don't have to pee. It's number two. Sorry, I can't stop. Number two is transitions. In DaVinci Resolve 19, they seem to have just gone ham on the transitions. Okay, so the first transition is box wipe. As you can see, very nice transition and it runs really well. What's evident with this update with DaVinci Resolve is that the transitions that they have added have a lot of customizability, which is really nice to see that they're making more of an effort on these transitions. I would like in future updates, if you're listening, which they're probably not, but you know, I pretend I'm a big YouTuber. Yeah, I genuinely would like to see more customizability added to pre-existing transitions within the inspector tab. There is already some customizability, but you know, it's nice to see that they're adding them, especially with this box wipe effect. They've also got this box twist effect. I don't know how often I will use this, but it's playful. It's nice. It does kind of look a bit PowerPointy though. I wouldn't, I'm not personally going to use it, but you know. There's also something called elastic rubber. And you might be asking, what on earth is that? Well, it's this. Yeah, elastic rubber. And again, lots of customizability in the inspector tab, which is always nice to see. But the best transition, and it is my favorite, and I've left it till last, I can't spell the flip, there we go, disarrange. Now it does use the GPU, so I, I imagine this might not be in the free version, but I might be wrong. On your screen now, it will tell you whether it's in the free version or not, but it looks sick, man. I mean, in the inspector as well, there is loads of things you can do here. Oh yeah, and how can I forget, there's also a transition called page curl. So technically I, I didn't leave the best till last. I left the best till second last. Let's just get on to number three. Number three, step forward. Number three, and we're moving into the titles. Now, like the transitions, they've added a lot of titles Titles. Some of them are really, really cool. Like there's this comic book one. Where is it? Let me search it. Hang on. Aggression. There's two here and I really like them. So you got this comics speed lines. Hell yeah, speed lines. Obviously you can adjust it in the inspector, make the gradient, I don't know. Let's make it more blue. Blue. Look at that, that's sick. And then look, comic titles as well, which have this really nice, I thought they had a nice transition. Oh, uh, is it this comic book thing that has the transition? Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm getting mixed up. There's a comic book like fusion effect, which is really nice that they added as well. You've probably seen me make that in real time and it just looks lovely. ka -chow. ka -chow. There's also another one called Neon Flicker, which is like the most stereotypical like 2016 After Effects kind of thing. I, I, I don't know why that, that gives me that vibe, but it does. I feel like everyone was doing this back in the day. Play that through. Look at that. It's cool. There's not as much customizability as I kind of hoped, but like it'd be nice to have some like drawing effect, like come on, like, you know, like a lightsaber-y like thing. You can't have everything in life, can you? There's also another fusion title called Superhero, as you can see here. It says sample, very original. I know I'm gonna write Dan Vinci because that's original as well. There you go, Superhero. And there's also Headline, which also has a crazy amount of customizability as well in the Inspector tab. And another one is this Elegant Shadow, which I actually think is really, really nice. 
Let me know your thoughts so far of all of these effects. Number four. Number four, maybe. Okay, so the next feature I really wanted to include is the IntelliTracker. Now the IntelliTracker is sort of integrated into what used to be the point tracker. Basically, it's a far more intelligent version of the point tracker. I imagine it's gonna be far more accurate at tracking a certain point than, you know, the original old school point tracker. Yeah, that's old school. So here we have the IntelliTracker. Let's just put it on the eye of this wooden duck thing. Don't ask me how I found this shot. And then let's track that bad boy. Yes, I am also a bad boy. And I'm sure it's not gonna have a single problem with this. I mean, look, it seems to be flying. Da, 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 da. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I imagine what this is doing is using a lot of GPU power and has AI integrations, because that was a whole big thing with DaVinci Resolve 19. And I imagine that is why this is called the IntelliTracker. Kind of sounds like a Teletubbies thing. <laughs> Now, number five. now this is massive and when I say massive I mean massive you can now resync your bins and power bins effectively loading in the new media that's been copying for example into your file explorer this is huge now for some reason I can't get this to work I've done some digging on the internet and I, I found one or two people having a similar issue where this just doesn't work but yeah hopefully it works for you guys it's something I've been asking for for so long number number six Six, super scale in the inspector tab. Super scale is a fantastic feature that basically upscales footage that might be at a lower resolution. I must state DaVinci Resolve has had this feature for quite a while. I think even back to like DaVinci Resolve 17 days. But what's new about this is that they've integrated AI into it, making it a hell of a lot better. Amazing. Pretty amazing. On your screen now will be a close up just so you can really see like how refined this is and how good of a job it does. Okay, number seven. Now fill it up on number seven. Now I don't know about you guys, but if you still have Adobe and you're using using DaVinci Resolve, sometimes you might run into this problem. And it has been finally fixed, or at least, well, it hasn't been fixed. It's been made more clear. <laughs> How could I have been more clear? Basically, in DaVinci Resolve, if you've ever downloaded a plugin or had an offline font in any way, you will just get a black screen. DaVinci Resolve will freak out and it'll just go, no. Nope. Black. Now, obviously, that's very unclear. And when you're new to DaVinci Resolve, it certainly stumped up me and all of my colleagues at work. This could almost be called the black screen of death. <laughs> But not to fear, DaVinci Resolve has a little message that appears in the bottom right corner letting you know of an issue and it's just so much clearer. Why wasn't this integrated before? I'm sure it didn't take long to add in, but you know, who, who cares? I mean, they've done it now, better late than never, I guess. It's like me in these videos, I haven't been uploading for a long time, can you tell? We are on number eight. Let's move on to the next big feature. So number eight is the Film Look Creator. Now I've seen online everywhere loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads Loads of channels that review DaVinci Resolve and cover these updates talk about this. At first, I was like, oh, what's the big deal? It's just a film look thing. But after using it for a few weeks, it's surprisingly quite good. And the reason I say quite good is just how quickly you can turn over a really nice effect that might have taken someone a fair bit of time in DaVinci Resolve 18, which is really nice to see. Like you can change the aspect ratio, make it look more film-like, maybe change the colors, add a vignette, split tone, bloom, add grain, flicker, you know, I, I used to have to add overlays and do things in fusion to get some of these effects. So it's nice to see it just, you know, skip a few steps. Really nice. Nice. They've sort of just combined loads of other effects and added a few new ones into this one thing, which I think makes perfect sense, really. Is it the number nine? Now, number nine is defocusing backgrounds with the magic mask in the color page. This is really nice for creators that are shooting at a high f-stop. Let's say you're shooting at f5 and you're not shooting at a nice f1.7 like this. You know, behind me is really blurred and you want this effect, but you don't want to necessarily shoot it. Or maybe you were shooting in the wrong settings when you shot the shot. You can do that. You can change the shot in post. I will fix it in post. Now, technically, you could kind of do this before, but they've kind of made it its own unified feature now. So it makes it far easier and quicker for you to do this. So all I've done there is use the magic mask here, then created another node, made sure the alpha channels onto that node, and then I can just adjust the blur. I'd basically say this effect is really similar to, I don't know whether you guys have used portrait mode on your iPhone. It looks kind of real to be honest. I mean, look at that. Really, really good. Well done, Black Magic. Well done, Commander. And number 10, the one you've been waiting for, the best feature in DaVinci Resolve 19 ever added. The feature which is going to kill the competition and destroy Premiere Pro once and for all is 
it's the flag effect. Simply search flying flag or just flag into the search, put it here, look how sick that is. I've always wanted to be able to do that and that deserves by far to be number 10 on this list. I'm sorry for those who thought it was going to be that the best thing ever, but it's not. <laughs> I mean, it's a cool effect, but I just don't understand when I'm going to need this. But I mean, yeah, it's cool nonetheless. Anyway, that has been my top 10 biggest features added to DaVinci Resolve 19. This has been a really fun video to make and I'm happy to do more if you guys are interested. Obviously, I didn't cover every single new feature that is in DaVinci Resolve 19 but I thought I'd just cover off some of my favorites that come off the top of my head but otherwise that is the end of the video I hope you guys enjoyed it crikey <laughs> my name's Dan and you've watched Dan Vinci don't forget to subscribe subscribe now otherwise you'll drown in the rain that's outside <laughs> it's really raining outside whoa thunderstorm